So thanks for going to talk uh, about XMPP over uh, WebSockets. So I'm going to start and talk a bit about uh, WebSocket. The name looks pretty cool, Web and Sockets. So uh, Sockets is like the basis uh, of uh, well, the internet and networking. And we have Web, so it's uh, totally uh, modern. So quite a recipe for awesomeness. Uh, and we're going to see exactly uh, how uh, WebSockets work, uh, high level, and then how we integrate that into uh, XMPP. What are the problems with uh, WebSockets? There are a few. Uh, and uh, finally, I'll show you an example, something that uh, we have implemented uh, within Process One, which uses WebSockets and some little tricks to make sure that everyone uh, can access and uh, uh, use WebSockets. So WebSockets, what are these? Uh, basically, it's a two-way connection between a server uh, and a browser. It's message-oriented, okay? So it's not a stream. Uh, for the time being, it's uh, mainly UTF-8 uh, data being exchanged, which is not uh, a big problem. Which is not a big problem uh, because basically what we're displaying on the browser is uh, text uh, data. So what it, uh, it is addressing, all those uh, uh, not very good solutions, such as Comet, Long Polling, Ajax Push, uh, Bosch, uh, hidden iframes, whatever, everything where we want to actually have some information being pushed from uh, the server to the client. We have some tricks, but they're not very good. So what are the advantages of uh, WebSockets? Well, we'll see later, but uh, way less load on the server because we don't have connections regularly uh, coming back uh, on the server. So less load on the server. The overhead is very, very small. The latency, of course, is uh, way better than uh, something like, for instance, uh, long polling or uh, where we have to reopen uh, every time a, um, a connection. It's also less effort on the client. Uh, we at Process One love mobile stuff, and uh, we like also with uh, our mobile uh, stuff with uh, long battery life. So it's better for uh, battery life. The uh, the cons, well, I hope we can wipe them out very soon. For the time being, it's not uh, ubiquitous. Um, we'll see later on which uh, browser uh, really support that. And some have found security issues in the current implemented draft, uh, which has a bit slowed down the, the progress of uh, uh, the WebSocket implementation. Let's see quickly uh, some JavaScript. So basically, you see it's very simple from, uh, from a JavaScript perspective to uh, connect to a WebSocket server. Just pass a URL. When it's connected, the uh, unopened callback is, clo uh, is called. Uh, I send a message using send. Uh, each time a message is received from the server, this uh, callback will be, uh, will be called. So it's very uh, easy to implement and have uh, web sockets and good latency uh, within the, 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 the browser. It's being normalized since forever. Uh, I tried to uh, track down the first email on the mailing list, but I'm pretty sure discussion started before. Uh, so the first mail I found was on the 30th March uh, 2009, which is quite a while back. Not much progress has been done since uh, the last eight months. Uh, well, even more, actually. So we had a few implementations done uh, following the different drafts uh, which have been released by the uh, iBuy working group. So it's the good thing it's uh, IETF. The bad thing is also it's IETF, uh, normalizing. So it's getting very politic and uh, political and anything like that. But, uh, well, it's it was inching towards progress, uh, but recently we had uh, uh, some problems and let's see about the problems but just for a second you see we have already some browsers implementing it Safari on the Mac and on iOS uh, we have uh, Chrome everywhere 
uh, Opera and Firefox, even though uh, those guys uh, uh, took a step back recently. So what are the current issues? Uh, the, some people, Adam Barth and uh, Eric Escola, uh, successfully using Flash uh, and the protocol used for uh, the exchanging messages using the uh, WebSocket protocol were able to actually uh, poison a transport proxy. For example, uh, they were able, well, they could have been able re uh, to replace, uh, for example, the uh, Google Analytics JavaScript on a proxy using uh, the current framing of WebSockets, meaning that all the people behind the proxy uh, were able, uh, were fetching not the original Google version of uh, Google Analytics, but their modified version. That's what they said in their paper. Links in the end. The thing is, well, they did not really use the official uh, handshake uh, for uh, for the, the WebSockets, so, uh, well, we're not really sure if this vulnerability, which has, uh, has been discovered, could really be exploited in the real world using WebSockets, but it was enough to actually uh, have WebSocket support disabled in Opera, uh, latest Opera versions and the latest Firefox 4 uh, beta versions. It's still accessible, but we need to uh, activate it using uh, hidden preferences. So, uh, and since then, nearly no progress has been done. Well, thousands of mails have been exchanged. Uh, to be really honest, I stopped reading it, uh, the mailing list, uh, just browsing it uh, superficially because it was way enough. Uh, but basically, uh, the, the real reason behind is that, uh, well, of course, we do servers, but uh, I'm not going to implement something that is not implemented on the browsers. I mean, it's useless. So we're going to follow what the uh, browsers implement. The problem is the, the browser developers uh, don't want to be uh, held responsible if uh, there is a vulnerability found uh, in WebSockets. So they tend to pile on currently more and more security features. Uh, the last idea is to use uh, one-way masking, meaning that all data coming from the client to the server has to be masked by uh, a key which is embedded with uh, each frame. Uh, other discussions were actually to use a TLS even when uh, on, a clear, uh, on a clear channel. Uh, so many ideas are floated. Uh, proxy implementers are saying that this vulnerability I talked quickly about uh, before does not really exist, but they have been kind of silenced uh, by the browser's implementers. So uh, we're a bit stuck, I must say, for the, the implementation floating around is still uh, uh, the one we found in, uh, well, nearly one year ago. Well, it's working, so that's uh, what we have uh, on EJABD, that's what we're using. And, uh, well, I can say, hopefully we'll get somewhere, but uh, I cannot give you any time frame. What I can say, what we are committed here at Process One, is that, of course, we will uh, follow the browsers if uh, they come up with some very weird protocol. We'll do our best to implement it so that uh, uh, EJABD uh, works correctly uh, with uh, this implementation. But that's the most I can promise, and Mikael too. <laughs> so, how about adding support to uh, our uh, most loved Internet Explorer and um, Firefox 3.6 and, you know, the, the browsers that we can find uh, in many places? We have Flash. And yes, the irony isn't lost on us. Because uh, some uh, fine guy on GitHub posted a WebSocket JS, which is a Flash module with uh, JavaScript coding, which emulates uh, completely the current implementation of WebSockets. So uh, I had to customize it a bit, so I have a fork on my GitHub account, because the problem is Flash does not embed uh, TLS encryption, meaning that you have to embed inside the Flash the TLS encryption, meaning that uh, the Flash file for WebSocket is roughly 
uh, is roughly uh, 186 kilobytes, uh, which is a lot, even though we can always cache that. If we remove TLS, we are at 70 kilobytes, which is uh, uh, quite acceptable. Depends of the, uh, of the use case, but for my demo, for some of the clients we're working with, uh, it's, uh, it's good enough. We don't need encryption for that case, it's public data and uh, we use uh, anonymous authentication, so no harm done. And uh, well, it's uh, 10 times slimmer anyway. The only problems, uh, well, it's a bit slower. I'll show you uh, on the screen afterwards with, uh, um, actually I removed the flash plugin from Firefox. You'll have to test on your own Firefox. So yeah, TLS support, uh, flash is, uh, the flash file is a bit heavier. And yes, it's flash. So, uh, to get a bit into the protocol, I won't, you, I won't show you any frames uh, in detail, but basically two parts. The first part is the handshake. Making sure that the client and uh, the server actually speaks uh, WebSocket. So there is, uh, and the other thing we'd like is it actually looks like HTTP while connecting to the WebSocket server. The idea being having a WebSocket server be, be, uh, being just behind the uh, AT port, uh, the HTTP port, and by using some header magic, we upgrade uh, the HTTP connection to a uh, WebSocket connection. When the handshake is done, so the current handshake is, uh, is quite strange because it involves uh, sending uh, non-UTF-8 data in the headers, so it makes some very weird headers to look at, and it kind of uh, not look like a lot like HTTP, but let's uh, just ignore that. And uh, yeah, so basically uh, that's the current implementation. The latest draft, which is uh, not yet implemented, but that's where they are, uh, still gets, uh, it starts get slash uh, a URL, then an upgrade header with a nonce, and then we mask the message just as I told you. Um, <clears throat> The server has uh, the ability to uh, accept or refuse the, uh, the, the connection uh, depending on the origin of uh, the request. Okay, it's kind of like a referrer uh, for uh, WebSockets. And uh, for example, in our EJBD implementation, uh, we, are, we can have a small hook uh, telling if we can actually accept or not from uh, this uh, website or that website. Um, <clears throat> so, well, it works. Uh, so, uh, how about the XMPP? Too many WebSockets, a bit of XMPP. So, there is an IETF draft uh, by Jack Moffitt, the editor, and, uh, and myself. Uh, so, basically, uh, well, let's be honest, Jack did most of the work. I sent him an email with basically those two lines and uh, he made a six page draft on that. And uh, there's real talent behind this. Uh, I look kind of very serious now because I have my name on that draft. But I just basically wrote that. Uh, <clears throat> so the differences between uh, TCP WebSocket and uh, uh, TCP uh, XMPP and uh, uh, XMPP WebSocket, basically it's real frame now. Okay, so one message is one stanza, uh, so it's one XML document uh, with uh, some small exceptions because uh, stream start and stream end actually an opening element and closing element of, uh, of an XML uh, document, so we have to cheat a bit. Uh, <clears throat> And, uh, but that's quite interesting actually, uh, framing uh, stanzas like that. Uh, we've uh, looked a bit with uh, Christophe about uh, using some uh, very high performance XML parses uh, because we, instead of having one big unbounded document, we have many small documents and there are uh, some very high performance specialized uh, XML parses. That could be interesting. So it's very early work, but uh, maybe we can like, extract even more uh, performance uh, from WebSockets compared to the usual TCP uh, connection. 
of course, no uh, TLS socket upgrade. Uh, basically, you connect on a secure web socket. So the negotiation, the TLS negotiation is done uh, at the beginning immediately. So here it changes a bit. But then again, it's, it, was, uh, it was quite easy to, to implement. I think the, the whole work for uh, implementing um, uh, web sockets in uh, Ijabadi, I think it was less than a week of work. Uh, well, then a few bugs were found and uh, corrected subsequently. But uh, it was, uh, it was uh, very quickly done. That's because we use Erlang, of course, and Ijabadi is very good. I'm paid to say that, don't worry. So, client and server support. Uh, we have uh, support in the ajabadi 2.2.x, uh, uh, which is not released yet, but will be uh, at some point. Uh, we have support uh, for that, so it's really simple. It's like one line to add in the ajabadi.cfg. Uh, we have, we have also written uh, Stroph.js uh, WebSocket support. There again, it's plugin. I mean, you just add the uh, JS file for WebSocket support and you don't have to change anything else uh, to uh, your Stroph.js application. I did write some prototype code for uh, JS Jack, which I just sent to Stefan, so maybe he can make something good out of it. Uh, so it's not released, but uh, let me emphasize on the yet, because it's, it's really good. Well, the results, uh, I'll try to be modest. So how about a small demo? Uh, so about that, we did a small demo, uh, which is called Git Live. So basically, uh, you have maybe a GitHub account, and uh, on GitHub, you have uh, what we call webhooks. And each time you do a Git push on GitHub, you can configure a GitHub to post uh, information about the push, uh, on some address or some protocol. Okay, so uh, that's what we use. So if you have your laptop in front of you, I'd like uh, you to come and visit gitlive.com. Or maybe let's go to the demo first, so that I can show you. Uh, and then, then I'll show you a bit of uh, what's happening uh, behind the, the scene. It works on uh, your iPhone too, maybe Android. Maybe Nicola will uh, show us. I'm going to go to the, uh, so for those who don't have their uh, laptop, uh, wait. Oh. It's, it's working everywhere anyway. Okay, so here, the service hooks from GitHub. Uh, so you have uh, many service hooks. One of them is Git Live. So you activate uh, the, um, uh, the, the service. And then uh, next time I push, you'd receive uh, on your laptop uh, the information live. So I'm not going to push, I'm just going to cheat and use a test hook. And uh, hopefully on your laptops, you should have uh, the, uh, the, a couple of comments uh, which just happened. can see them here. I just uh, I just had them appear here. This is from uh, the Jabadi um, uh, repository and the uh, EXMPP repository. Actually, it's live already. Uh, if you go to the uh, download pages of Tsung or Jabadi, you'll see this small box called Comet, and you'll see the last Comet, and if uh, one of us would commit just when you're visit, visiting the page, you'd see it uh, in real time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, you can't read, but it's a uh, couple of days ago. So let's go back to uh, Git Live. So here, you'll list your username slash your, pro, uh, your uh, repository name. 
you add them, some documentation about where to click. And then uh, you have here uh, a bit of uh, JavaScript that you can integrate in your uh, in your uh, page and uh, as uh, Michael did on the uh, on the website and you'll have your push being displayed in real time. Mm -hmm. I also made because totally useless but uh, totally uh, funny the uh, small bookmarklet where you can actually visualize anywhere uh, the last comments on your projects. I mean, uh, visit uh, Anton's page and see here, I can integrate it. It's a bookmarklet anyway. So how does it work? Uh, there's several steps. First step uh, is going to check if there is WebSocket support, native WebSocket support. If there is, no problem. It will connect uh, through WebSockets. If you're using uh, uh, a WebSocket-less browser, it's going to try and load the Flash version of WebSockets. When it's done, it's going to connect uh, through WebSockets to the server. If it fails, for instance, a problem that uh, I haven't uh, addressed is, uh, for example, proxies. If you, hire, if you are behind a proxy or a fascist firewall, uh, you may not be able to use actually WebSockets because it's just closed. So I have uh, the, it will, if possible, degrade to Bosch. So here it's slower because this time it's connected using uh, a Bosch connection. So hopefully, uh, using this uh, degradation strategy, uh, we should be able to display this widget everywhere. The base use case is of course uh, using uh, native WebSockets because you've got latency, you've got uh, very small overhead. Uh, if you don't, load the flash. It's too bad, but at least we have uh, IE support. And if everything fails, there's, uh, there's always Bosch, which should be uh, able to work in any condition. Uh, with, it's almost true. We've had some uh, edge cases with uh, fascist um, uh, firewalls again, and the idea maybe, and I will do that at some point maybe, is uh, use a Bosch over HTTPS. In that case, uh, some uh, uh, firewalls won't be won't look inside exactly because some of them don't like Bosch. Uh, but for the time being, uh, there it is. Some features that uh, are also working. Well, I had to deactivate one of them this uh, this morning because I had a bug on Chrome. But basically, we're using a Rebind, uh, the same Rebind we're using on uh, Text One for uh, fast rebinding to a previous uh, XMPP connection. So it's, uh, it's used on text one, but I, it's also integrated into uh, Struff WebSocket so that uh, the user, when he, he's connecting back to the same connection, we're using a, a session storage for storing the information about the connection. And uh, when he uh, wants to connect again, he will not go through all the SASL uh, hoops and exchanges. He will just rebind to the previous connection. And uh, we use uh, attach, uh, Bosch attach, uh, wherever possible. So GitLive is here to stay. So you can use it on your projects. We'd be very happy to uh, to see that. There's a blog post uh, detailing how you can customize uh, Git Live. Uh, this is a mustache template, and uh, well, the CSS you can modify it just as you want. So uh, if you want to play with it, it's with great pleasure. Uh, it's also, I hope, the first. Uh, project we build around this uh, strategy and technology. I have many more ideas and so little time uh, to uh, build upon this uh, foundation because it's yeah so many good things. I mean, uh, what the uh, uh, AF83 uh, guys uh, told us, I mean, I like my solution too. And it's kind of same things, fun things we can build. And uh, well, like uh, more things built and I have some ideas and I hope we can uh, push them out of the door uh, this year, hopefully. <laughs> so do you have any questions? Yes. 
Yes, um, one question um, in a mobile environment, the, uh, the web sockets. Um, keep it light because I've been, uh, been talking about this before. This um, okay. um, is it is it automatically being kept alive? How does it work? Can my connection is broken? What happens? Uh. Uh, at what level? Meaning, uh, for example, you're in the subway and you're losing the connection, and then, uh, well, basically here I have uh, the, the the JavaScript code will, uh, when a strobe sends it, uh, the disconnected uh, event will try and reconnect uh, until it can actually reconnect, and uh, using rebind if possible, and uh, then I think I use the. Uh, I used quite a short time, I think it's 30 seconds before, uh, so that uh, we don't keep uh, too much state on the server regarding open connections. It's basically for the users to change pages and not ha go through the whole connection process uh, again. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, I send a keep alive. I, th I think Strof, uh, it's, it goes every 15 seconds or 20 seconds, it sends a backslash n on, on the channel. Any more questions? Oh, I forgot about one thing. We're talking about JavaScript. Just to say that the whole library is uh, served uh, something like 20 kilobytes compressed, of course. Um, so uh, it's uh, very cheap to implement, plus the 20 kilobytes of the flash file, which is only loaded if necessary. So that is 40 kilobytes max. Hmm? <laughs> So, I did look uh, in Socket.io, I even uh, at some point I really looked into it and maybe decided to rebuild upon uh, Socket.io. But the problem is Socket.io is uh, kind of naked on, this, on the web socket or whatever the transport. Here I'm building, a, I'm more building on Stroph. Uh, than on uh, the, the naked web sockets. So it was, uh, it was more complex. And compared to Socket.io, which uh, deals with many transports, uh, JSONP, uh, long point, whatever, uh, here I really have only uh, two, uh, two transports. One of them is web sockets with maybe Flash and Bosch. So I didn't need all that flexibility and all that, uh, all those lines of code. But yeah, we have, uh, we chose from exactly the same open source projects to actually uh, build uh, the solution. But I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? No question? So is that, is that this going to be uh after Well, I hope so. The the right person to ask the question to is this guy. <laughs> No idea yet, but uh, uh, it's going to happen uh, this year definitely. And uh, actually, the, 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 the goal is to also to, to to check what is going to happen with WebSocket as well. Uh, so uh, yes, we, we we need to talk with uh, with different parties also to to release that code and, uh, and make sure everything is fine. So yes, it will this will happen, but uh, we need to. Uh, to, to, to make sure the timing is right and, and so on. Yeah, especially um, given the state of flux in which uh, the, the web socket is, uh, we don't want really to really tie our release, uh, uh, our release time frames to uh, what they are doing. So we want to stay quite nimble. So, but it, yeah, it will happen. <laughs> oh, e EDF, if you are looking, please help us <laughs> releasing this uh, specification final. Any more questions? Questions? Thank you, Eric. Thank you.